son of a gun is snappy. I said I was just gonna put it on there to set it up, take it off, and put that guy back on there. But... All right, guys, and welcome back. And today, this is the final part of this video. If you watched the other two videos, the first video is me taking apart a brand new Brawler 950 carburetor, inspecting it, cleaning out some things that I didn't like too much. And then the video after that, we reassembled the entire thing so you can use that as a rebuild video. It's not going over cleaning because obviously it's a brand new carburetor, but you can watch me put that together and you can do that same thing with your new carburetor or the one that you're planning on rebuilding to make sure everything looks okay. And today we are taking that 950, we're putting it on the 357 cubic inch L21, not to swap them out and use this carbon on the L21, but to get it ready and working for the 400 cubic inch small block Chevy because when I put that carburetor on the 400, I want to start up right away with zero issues so I know it's good. So today we're going over the floats, just initial setup when you rebuild a carburetor because everything's out of wax. We need to re-put all those, you know, idle air screws, the idle and all that back into working operational order on a motor so that it will idle and run correctly. So that's what we're doing today. All right guys, so first off, what we need to do before we do anything to this guy is set the floats because if these guys start to flood into your motor, it's pretty hard to get all that out. You really need to drain your oil. If you get too much in your motor, then you need to pull the plugs and cycle it over to get all the fuel out. So we wanna avoid that completely. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we are going to set the floats. Now right here, let me take this off real quick and I'll show you right here how you set this. It's actually really, really easy. There's two gaskets. There's one on the top screw right here, and there's one on the bottom. And this guy right here that comes up, screws in and out, the needle and seat. When this goes down, when you screw this down right here, it will let less fuel into the bowl because that um, float will come up and shut that needle off so it won't allow any more fuel. So this is the first thing we gotta do. Uh, I screw these in a good bit, so that way you don't have to worry about it flooding right away and you're just bringing them up to actually set the level initially. So what I have done right here is I have this taken these two wires off my relay. That way I can tap this together right here and I can engage my fuel pump. So I'm gonna watch these bowls real quick and I'll watch the front and the back and make sure they're not gonna flood. Okay, we need to tighten this one up right here. If you don't get this tight enough, this top screw, then it will seep out the top. So just make sure those are good and tight. They don't gotta be too tight, but if you don't want fuel coming out the top, you gotta do that. So let's go ahead and check it again. Actually, the back looks set. The front needs to come up. So what we're gonna do, This is an adjustable one I'm gonna use. All right. And we need to screw this guy this way so that way the float can come up more and fill these bowls. So we're gonna come up some more. Let's see real quick. This might be way, way down in there. Let's see. Yeah, so if it goes too far in there, you can't get any adjustability on that. See, I'm not even turning it. So this guy, I'm gonna have to turn it out some by hand right here first. Then I'm gonna put that gasket back on, put the nut on there, and then the screw on top. And now we can adjust it. All right, let's go out a little more. I don't think we're gonna flood right there at all. We're gonna find out. So now we got that tight. Let's hit the fuel pump again. Okay, it's going a little too high right here in the float. And you want that to be in the middle. So I am going to go back down some. Oops, there we go. Go back down. 
just a little bit. So have yourself like, you know, any, you know, can of soda, your favorite adult beverage, just cut it in half and have yourself a 5 16 wrench handy. So if, when the bowl goes up, you're gonna have to lower that level and check it again. You can't check it if it's already too high. So first we need to drain some fuel out because the float level is too high in the bowl. So we're gonna have to take some of that fuel out and make a couple more adjustments here to the front before we continue. Now we're not gonna drain all of it out. We're gonna drain just enough out. We're not taking it off. All right, got that fuel. So now the fuel's out. Let's gonna make sure this is tight again. All right, let's try it again. Looks like we're almost there. I'm gonna take it down just a little bit lower. Let's see where it sits. And I think we're pretty much there. Um, it's good enough that we can start it up. We can make any fine tune adjustments afterwards on the float levels when it's running. So next we're gonna move to setting the idle air screws to the initial point, which is actually pretty darn easy. I'll show you that real quick. All right, so what I do to initially set my idle air screws, I'll just take a regular old screwdriver, right? And I'll take these guys right here and I'll turn them all the way in until they stop. Oops. And then when it stops, I'll go half turn, half turn, and then quarter. And I'll do that to all of them, the exact same thing. And of course, it's four corner idle, so you got them on every side. So just make sure you do it all four, the exact same amount. And then I guess we'll attempt to start her up. Okay, so the relay is back to where I can turn on the side. I gotta remind myself to tighten that up later on. I just had it finger tight right now. I also went through and adjusted these guys. Actually, I adjusted them when it was out. I should have adjusted them to show you guys, but you want these quarters right here not to have any slack from the cam on this little arm that moves right here. So that way these guys will, see that? The moment you hit this, feel it come out. And you wanna do that on both sides. There is a whole procedure. We're just trying to get this close. So right here, if I do it this side too, let's see, you'll see it'll come out right when you hit it. See that? Doing that too much, could just throw a bunch of fuel in there. So I got a GoPro right here. I couldn't get it in the middle because uh, there's a little lump right here, right there. So I couldn't really stick it there, but it might be a cool angle. So I'm gonna hit record on this. So let's see. If it starts up, it should. Let's go do it. Everything's all cold. Hit my poor man's engine evac. First time, baby. Uh, idle is high. Dang, I think fired right up. Idle's high, so let's go ahead and adjust that. And it's cold too, so we'll see how all, how all this plays out once it warms up. It's got a good bit of warming up to do, it's still cold. Can okay, use this to adjust the idle. Our floats look good, they're right in the middle. Both sides, and that worked out great. I'm not sure that is. That's about right, we're right around, I like it to be around 11, 1200 and idle. We'll keep it there for right now. Let it warm up. Let's see. So far it seems pretty responsive. Back seems pretty responsive. Let's let it warm up and then we'll wrap on her one good time. 
All right, so we're idling at a pretty decent air fuel. That can probably come down just a little bit. Let me turn that down some. We got some heat in it now, so we can turn that down. Turn my fans on. Idle seems okay. I like mine to be right around there. So let's lean it out just a touch. I'm gonna put it in gear now. It should drop a little lower. That's probably okay for right now. Comes back up. Like I said, we have some heat in it now. So let's stab at it real quick. Of a gun is snappy. Well, I said I was just going to put it on there to set it up, take it off, and put that guy back on there. But let's take it for a rip. All right, so it is super lean. I'd get gas regardless. When you go with the carburetor that's too big, usually people say like, you know, you have to jet it up. That's, I mean, jet it down because it's too big. That's actually not how it works. You usually have to jet it up because the signal is not as strong because the motor's too small. It can't pull the vacuum. You get the same amount of fuel under load as it would on a bigger motor. It has a lot more vacuum, a lot more volume of air going through. So I said I wouldn't do this. But I'm going to do it anyway. Screw it. All right. So here is what I did. I went up three sizes in the front. And I went up four sizes in the back. What we did, I went down to a 5.5 power valve because I made some big changes. I went up three sizes, to, sorry, two more sizes in the rear, and I went up four sizes on the front. At the end of this, I'll tell you exactly how big these jets are. And this is pretty typical when you use a carburetor that's too big on a smaller placement motor. You have to go a lot bigger on the jets, and we'll talk about that later. But I think this right here is going to put it over there in the 12s where it should be in the AFR range. So the 750 is back on its proper place on a 357 cubic inch Gen 2 LT1. This carburetor is just way, way, way better for this motor right here. So let's go back to the other guy and let's talk about how big the jets were. Because of course, the 950 is intended for this motor right here, not this guy. And all in all, this guy, I think it's going to work really good on the 400. I mean, it worked you know, surprisingly well for being so big on the 357. Now, how big I went on the jets in the back? I went 93 in the rear and I was 
um, I forget what it was, I think it was 86 right here. And it still wasn't quite big enough for the LT1 because the reason why is like when these holes get bigger right here and you have a smaller motor, remember your motor is just an air pump. So if it can't pull enough air through here, volume of air for the carb to get a good signal, it's not gonna pull as much fuel through. If you're going like, you're thinking like, oh man, I got 90 jets on my, you know, 350, it's making all kinds of power. That, that's not true. It's because it's not pulling that same amount of fuel through the boosters because your, your motor isn't big enough to draw that fuel through there. So if you're going bigger on the jets, way, way big on a smaller motor, just know that your signal, either your signal to the carburetor is not good enough or your motor is just not, you know, pulling enough air to properly meter that carburetor and you need to go smaller. You're gonna have a lot better tunability from all driving conditions. It's just gonna have more torque. It's gonna have better atomization if you properly size a carburetor to your motor. And with that said, if you wanna see the 400, I'm gonna be uh, working on that heavily soon to get it ready to go in the uh, S10. I'm pretty excited about that. I wanna feel all that low end torque that I've never felt in a big displacement small block Chevy. I mean, it's not big, big, but it's pretty darn big for you know a small block Chevy and street driving it around. So if you guys wanna see that, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell for notifications and that like button. I got more videos coming and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.